Hey there, quick video about the integrations. They operate a lot like the modules do. So they use those squiggly lines, right? Uh, so squiggly, and then the integration would be something like live chat or talk to or whatever it's called. Uh, we need to put that list in there, just a you know, clear and obvious list. But the point of this is you can paste it into any of the pages of your website, wherever you want this thing to show up. And so it'll show up in that section and it'll look good. And again, the integrations are named inside the pages and that gives you a clue as to the name. So if I were to go into some page, okay, and I said, I want to integrate call to action on the page or the newsletter on the page or the payment gateways on the page, Anyway, that is probably what this is. All is one word, no spaces, all caps. Payment. Uh, you can try payment or payments, but otherwise go, you know, gateway or gateways, right? Because that's what it's saying here. So it's something like that. It could be payment gateway, but I think it's payment gateways. Um, and the point of that is that I can copy this thing and put it wherever I want into the web page. So I could have a lot of paragraphs, but I want that thing to appear right in the middle of the page somewhere where it makes sense to me and I go check and see. By the way, payment gateways goes with the pricing section, right? For the front page. Remember that right now, this only operates on the index page, okay? Um, because normally you don't want to flood people on your deeper level pages. You want them focused on the topic at hand and they can always go to the home page to get the bigger point of view, which will include everything. So it's just strategy, but that's how you operate it. You click it and that'll integrate it on the page, but where do you want it to go? Do you want it to go at the top of the page, bottom of the page, middle of the page, what? And you can try things like this because sometimes it works out in a way you want. You can center something, stick it on the right. It just depends on, on the module and the other content on the page, right? So whatever you have there. Now, I know that we use a lot of tokens, so you don't see much, but that's okay. There's a contact us form on the page, payment gateways on the page, contact us sidebar on the page, which I'm going to take out because it doesn't make sense to put that on the page anyway. Um, I'm going to take this out for now. I'm going to hit update and whatever that page is, which is services. Ah, okay, so this particular one uh, isn't updating, which is okay. I'm just showing you the integrations anyway. Uh, they're what you think. You just paste into the page and go check it out. And you can put it in any page. Like I said, it's just like modules, we covered those earlier. So the way these work is also the way this works, okay? And many of these things do have two options. You know, if you can put it in the page, you can put it in the page. Otherwise, what you can also do on the home page, I'm just kind of pointing it out again, on the home page, okay, is that you can enable those things down here like sections. So yeah, you could have an image gallery turned on that's real low, but you could also have the image gallery up in the content of your page, right? The box that has the sidebar and the content, the page, right? So you can have two places for the testimonial, two places for the image gallery, two places for the video. You can flip either one on or off. Just depends on whether you want the stuff in the content or below it or above it. So that's the cool thing is you have all the options, okay? So anyway, that's what those things are, those integrations. So usually you would not put call to action into the page. You would flip the call to action section on so it can float up and down. But on an inner page, you have less choice to do that. And so you'd wind up integrating these into the contents the way you want. Okay, having said that, the integrations that we have, let's make sense of these, okay? There's Calendly. So in Calendly, you have an account they give to you. You can choose the meeting time based on the way you set that up in your account. Um, and then go forward from here. What's the background color, text color? What's the button text say? It's going to say something like schedule a demo and that would be the color and the text color, right? Which you can change. So it's going to be a button that floats down here in the corner when you enable it, okay? That's Calendly for you. And so when Calendly is live, how does that look? Right like that. Recognize the colors and the, what it says and it's right there. And if I click it, 
It's great because it pops it right up. There's the 15 minute Skype or phone for the account I set up and I can choose a time when to have this conversation. You know, and it'll send the email and do all the other normal stuff if you have Calendly, okay? So there you go. That's what Calendly is all about. Setting those appointments and keep reminding them to reach out to you when the time comes, reminding you that the appointment's coming and that we can line up a bunch of conversations for the day and fill out the schedule spots and line up your day, you know, for, con for conversations. Okay, there's that and save it. <laughs> Now, there's copying the link to, I forget what that's for. What does the link do? Control V. Okay. Yeah, the link, that's just for you to see if you've gotten it right. Okay. That would be the link I could send somebody directly to just schedule. Okay. That is the link. Okay. All right. So what else do we have? Integrations. We have call to action. That's a floating bar. That bar just floats up and down on the page when it's enabled. Like it's disabled right now, so you haven't been seeing it. Oh, I'm gonna have to refresh, aren't I? By the way, this is looping video for the templates that have it, okay? Some templates have it. All right, let's say I wanted to enable it. Again, set up your color scheme and even the width of your button, how big do you want it to be? Well, it depends on how much writing you're doing and how big you want it to be around your writing. I mean, you wouldn't want the box to be this big if all you're saying is this. <laughs> but there you go. If you're going to say something bigger in your call to action, then you can make your width bigger. All right, so you'll see. You'll just check it back and forth and get it right. Button background color and the button position. Do you want it on the bottom right or the bottom left? You know, and so if I were to save it enable, uh, I think it's going to show up on the left anyway. We'll see. Hmm. All right, so I'm gonna kill that. I'm gonna kind of scroll down. There it is. Click here to start now, right? What else could it say? Join our next webinar, join our live webinar, you know? Uh, join the webinar. <laughs> and so this can go wherever you want and do whatever you want, okay? Um, there you go, because it gives the button text and the button link, right? How's that for cool? So that's useful. All right, what else do we have? Join us. <laughs> I don't even remember what this is. <laughs> text, button text, button link, text, module text, and enable or disable. Oh, I totally forgot what this thing is, man. Join us. I, I want to see how this thing looks. Maybe it's for the uh, top header. Uh, <laughs> module text, huh? Oh, okay. Okay. Submit, maybe. Um, join our Facebook group. I'll, I'll just see because I'm not sure what it's going to say. And we'll give it some stuff. Background color, give it a little, you know, kind of darker. Text color, something nice and light, maybe. We different color. <laughs> All right. All right. Button background color, uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh boy, it's something dark again. Button text color, <laughs> something light. Okay, let's see where that thing shows up. Because <laughs> I don't recall and I want to know. Probably at the top of the page somewhere. Let's see. Oh, that's right. It's a whole bottom runner, for instance. I think we can even set it bottom or top. Let's see. No. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the thing. Okay. But that runs across the bottom of the page. And again, this could be like your webinar link, you know. So you can use something really specific for the stuff you want to say and do that would show up on the website so that it's just there, right? And it's always a reminder until people decide to turn it off, okay? Or join it. So there's that. What else do we have for integrations? Live chat, okay? So if you enable that and you put in your link from your chat, wherever it is, whatever it is, okay? Then what? Then you get your chat button in the corner, right there, the live chat, right? 
Oh, nobody's there to take it right now. Nobody's signed in, but that's okay. Somebody can do name, email, message, and submit it to wherever I have this on my account. Okay. So yeah, these integrations, the services themselves or third party would have to sign up for Calendly. Some of these uh, have free options. Uh, some are paid only, but that's just it. You can hop into these things and see what you can do. And it's great. I think everything's going to, you know, like live chat. Uh, you can have a free option for that, I think. Um, and a free option for Calendly, maybe. Uh, newsletters. All right. We set up several newsletters, MailChimp, Campaign Monitor, GetResponse, ActiveCampaign, MailerLite, and Salesforce. So far, so good. MailChimp, it's free up to the first 500 people. What do you need? API key and a list ID and either make it active, yes or no, if you have that account, right? So you would sign up for the account and go look for the key and the list ID. You'll find them, you know, under the API section, probably and plug them in here. And then all of a sudden this thing will work, okay? So almost all of these are identical concepts. It's got an API key and a list ID and either activate it or not. You'll really only want one of these active, okay? Because that's the idea is that there's one of them that's active. The other one should be turned to not active if you turn one to active, okay? So whatever they are, you know, it's that simple. It's really the same thing all the way through. Okay, so then the general settings tab is where you make it look a certain way. What do you want the heading to be, the subheading, the button text, right? And what fields do you want on that form that people have to fill in? Well, they got to fill in their email. There's no reason to make that optional. The point of a newsletter is to capture the email. But you could also include the name and the contact, meaning contact phone. They should change this word to phone. They'll get that soon. So anyway, uh, then the styling, right? What do you want the color scheme to be? Again, we make all these color schemes so that you can adjust the colors of the website and these won't look funny, you know? Uh, and you can borrow your colors that you use for your website and your color palette or whatever, whatever you want to do. Copy those, come over here and paste them in if you want in order to match colors. That's when you wanna match colors. Often you want to make things stand out, but then the point of a palette is to give you different colors that resonate with the other colors so that you can use a different color sequence that will still look good. Okay, so I think you get the idea. That's the uh, newsletter integration. Payment gateways. Okay, payment gateways, like for pricing, you can add plans and delete plans. If you add plans, that's cool. What is it somebody's buying? Product number one, two, three, what, what is it called? Or how do you describe it? There's a little description that goes with the title, right? And then what's the type of uh, subscription? Is it a one-time or is it a subscription? Okay. And if it's one-time, it's just one time and what's the price? That's it. So you're gonna buy this, which is described here. You're gonna pay once this price um you can put anything else in here and save it okay if you want to make it a subscription what is the monthly price and what are you going to charge for the annual like i always say if you're going to charge 97 a month then make it 970 a year so users get two months free i mean it's totally up to you but that's a way to create an incentive for the yearly right if you would rather people were paying by the month, then add in the rest of it here so that there's no incentive to pay by the year because they're going to wind up paying the same amount whether they pay by the month or by the year. Okay? And so you can describe it and save it. And when you do, you're going to get the item in your list. Okay? Like I didn't create one, but I could have. Matter of fact, I guess I should, huh? So product one or product... <laughs> Well, one, right? This is my first product for sale. All right. Um, it's going to be, uh, um, yeah, like I was saying, <laughs> 97 to 970. Let's see how this goes. And just to understand this, sometimes 
you get gaudy and loud and find things to make it too big uh, to see what it's going to look like by the time you're done with it. Yeah, you know, so let's do like 400, align the left, 15 and 15, even though right now, um, I don't know if there's a need. Okay, and save it. Okay, so what I do, I went kind of out of my way. So now I need to put that on one of my pages, don't I? If I want to make it work or I have to make it a pricing module like a section on the home page, right? So I would enable the section. So we'll, we'll look at both of those here in a minute. Let's do another one. Product two. Yep. Here is my second product. Okay. And I'm going to make this a one-time payment, right? <laughs> 997. <laughs> All right. And I'm just going to say, get it now and be happy. Forever. <laughs> All right. Let me get some other image. There, there are too many images. And yeah, WEBPs don't have the preview style look to them. Oh, I can't tell if that's anything or not. 5 1. Uh, okay. I got it. <laughs> All right. I'll do the same thing with a 400, right? And the 15, I want to line them up so that the page kind of looks good lined up. So I'm, I'll do them the same way and just see what this looks like, okay? So here we go. Uh, by the way, to connect them, go to settings. I'm not going to go to mine, but when you do that, you'll see the live public key, secret key for PayPal, the live public key and secret key for Stripe, and the sandbox key sets. And you'll see the switch between live and sandbox for PayPal and live and sandbox for Stripe. And you can enable or disable PayPal. You can enable or disable Stripe. So you can literally be as exacting as you want. And when you do sandbox, that way you can test your own purchases. Make sure everything happens the way you thought it would. Make sure everything's good to go. All right. So there you have it. And so, yeah, let's take a look at the way this is done. All right. <clears throat> I'm uh, going to go to the home page. <clears throat> I mean, you could put the payment on any page, but the sections only work on the home page right now. Right. I think. And so, I mean, you can always test and see when those change because uh, we're always updating as we go. We're going to make things better and more fluid. We won't take anything away. We'll just add. <laughs> But like, for instance, pricing, like right now it's at the bottom of the page, right? Uh, but if I update it and double check it and flip it, let's see how that looks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to also flip that off. Somewhere, it should be there. And if it's not there, then I have to let them know that, hey, this didn't kick in this version uh, and we got to fix it. So just let me know about anything. These are brand new templates, right? They can be a little weird. So just, just let us know if you see any issues and we will fix them ASAP. All right, so anyway, if you can't get that one to pop on down there, let me, let me try a couple of things real quick. One is I want to move it up. I want to move it like way up here underneath something like right below the content, okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's it's not prepared with it. That's right. I'm going to have to have these guys fix it. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but let's see about putting it into the page. So I'm going to activate that integration on this page, the payment gateway. And so right in here, I want to put it somewhere. And I think, again, <laughs> payment. I'll just try it. Gateways. Okay. <laughs> It'll be something like that. Okay, update. Oh, it's not going to update that either. Oh, it's totally ruining my ability to show you the demo, huh? Well, I think you get the idea. <laughs> uh, I have to go back and, and say, hey, did you guys not do anything with M4EP2? It's a different, I went to a different website right now, and that's just what happened is this one wasn't prepared. Uh, I thought it was, but it wasn't. All right, so then um, Stack Hunter. That's just whatever the password, the username, and the project ID for Stack Hunter, so that you can pull data in from Stack Hunter, which we don't have fully integrated, but we will soon enough. And that just adds to the information we get for each of the people that come. Okay? 
All right, there you go. Well, there's that. And that covers all the integrations. And the idea is you can put them into the page and or stick them in a section on the main page that you can move around, all right? So it probably operates on your template when you get it from website-installer.com because here's what happened. When, as we report the bug fixes, we fix every, every one of these and the ones that got bought already, okay? And sometimes what we forget about fixing are these dummies that we set up in the old times when we were working on it before we saved the final and made it available, okay? So don't worry, <laughs> uh, yours is gonna work. If you ever have a problem, just ask and we'll fix it. Okay, that's it for the integrations, we can move on. All right.